Hey guys, my name is Jeff. And I hold in my hand the GeForce GTX 680. When we built this, we wanted it to be the world's fastest GPU. And we accomplished that. The world's fastest GPU. <laughs> <laughs> Now, all jokes aside, in this video, we're taking a look at a GTX 680, 13 years later. Why? Well, YouTube randomly decided to recommend me NVIDIA's original launch video, and it got me thinking. This is a sign. A sign for me to go waste money on an obsolete GPU. But wait, is it actually obsolete in 2025? Have I just bought myself a glorified HDMI port or can this thing actually play any modern games released in the last few years? Well that's what we're going to find out in this video. Released all the way back in March of 2012, the GTX 680 was a king of its time. It packed a mighty 2GB of VRAM, ran on the brand new Kepler architecture and Nvidia proudly called it the world's fastest GPU. Well, for about 6 weeks until the GTX 690 came along and ruined the party. But with all that said, it's time to dust this thing off and see what it's actually capable of in 2025. Alright, so on screen is the full specs of the PC we will be testing the GTX 680 with. We're also using the latest version of Windows, which is Windows 11 25 H2, as well as the latest driver for this card, which I believe was 475.14 which was released in August 2024. We also decided to test games in terms of oldest, in terms of the year they were released, all the way up to the newest, at least in terms of what I've got on this PC at the moment. But with all that said, let's go ahead and test this GTX 680 in 2025. Alright, so this game surprised me, and not in a good way. Now we ended up playing first at 1600 by 900 with the lowest settings possible, which for a 10 year old game is quite underwhelming. I never played this game myself, nor did I have a gaming PC at this point. Was this game classed as demanding back in 2015? Well, from this benchmark it seems it. At 1600 by 900, we were able to get close to 60 FPS target. That I would deem playable. But when we did switch to 1920 by 1080, we dropped to around 45 FPS. Surprisingly low for a game this old. I was expecting to be able to play at 1080p medium settings at 60 plus FPS. Maybe I underestimated how demanding this game was. Or maybe I overestimated how capable this card was. Either way, our first game and one of our oldest, we wasn't off to the best start. Alright, so now for GTA 5. Well, I made a stupid mistake of thinking I could run the enhanced edition on this card. Yeah, it didn't like that and it wouldn't open. Rookie mistake, huh? I honestly didn't even think about the fact that GTA 5 Enhanced was more demanding. I believe a GTX 960 is a minimum requirement for this version of the game. With that said, I haven't got 5 working days to install the original game. So we will leave this one as user error. Because I'm, I'm just stupid, what can I say? Alright, so moving on to Fortnite, which was actually released 8 years ago in house, so this game is getting seriously old, but has remained one of the most popular battle royale games, or just games in general. We decided to play at performance mode because we we are using a 13 year old GPU, like what, what could we expect? I think you could get away with playing on DX12 low settings, but I would say expect somewhere between 60 to 90 FPS probably. We actually did lose a little bit of FPS even in performance mode at about 60 FPS compared to normal if we're using a Ryzen 5 5600 with a relatively new or modest graphics card we would be seeing anywhere between 240 to 260 depending on the scenario so we did lose a little bit of performance but it was playable. Now prior to playing any games we did actually uh, DDU our old drivers from our old card and then install new ones so games like Fortnite do and will have a lot of stuttering especially the first few games after a fresh driver installation so that definitely didn't help with making it feel smooth um, but I definitely think my brain's absolutely fried now and anything below 240 FPS just feels horrible and that's crazy to say but Fortnite run absolutely fine yes you lose a little bit of performance but if your mate said, hey, I've got a GTX 680 that's going to at least give you 
an image and you want to play Fortnite, then yeah, it, it absolutely is fine. Alright, so Shadow of the Tomb Raider next, and this was a game I was really hoping would run at 60 FPS on lower settings, and it, it certainly didn't. We were seeing around 45 FPS on average on the absolute lower settings at 1080p, so I guess we could drop the resolution down a little bit further, but whether it would help us reach that 60 FPS mark, I'm not too sure. It does kind of make sense though, because it being an open world game with a lot of different textures and big mountains and whatnot it it can be quite demanding on your graphics card i think the main thing and i mentioned this about all the games is or most of the games should i say is i think the biggest thing is that this is a two gigabyte card i feel like if we had a four gigabyte version it we may actually see slightly better um performance especially in games that are kind of limited by the vram which <laughs> most games will be but in the end shadow of the tomb raider was well, playable if you're happy with 45 FPS, but honestly for me, 60 FPS is at where it should be. So in the end, I jumped off the cliff and said, I'm done. Alright, so for Resident Evil 2, we run at the lower settings, and as you can see on screen, we were certainly hitting a VRAM limit. If we tried to play on anything higher than medium, uh, we were just completely over the amount of VRAM we have, and probably would have caused a lot of stuttering and performance issues but on the lowest settings we actually seen pretty decent FPS uh, uh, close to about 100 for the average and our 1% and 0.1% and our 1% and 0.1% lows also were pretty respectable now I know this game is 6 years old so it's getting on a little bit but, but it was actually nice to see a game run absolutely fine above 60 FPS albeit with the lowest settings possible but definitely was playable and this card handled it absolutely fine now next we did try to play apex legends because i thought well this is quite an easy to run game that's more cpu demanding but i didn't realize this but it actually requires DirectX 12 as of about two years ago i believe so of course we wasn't able to play it now even though apex legends didn't work one of the demanding games that did work at least booted was cyberpunk 2077 which was released in 2020 now we played at the bare minimum lowest settings possible and unfortunately when i say playable it we did we did average pretty much not even 30 fps so is it playable not really did it look awful no but it did feel like 25 fps so you know it, it's just unplayable really that's to be expected though like i said this is a 13 year old graphics card now cyberpunk is by no means an easy to run game even on the latest and greatest hardware but unfortunately i would say the gtx 680 didn't quite cut it even though respectably it did actually launch a game so there's one positive all right so for our next game we played overwatch 2 and we played it at the lowest settings except our textures were on medium and we honestly got a pretty good average and kind of max fps nearly close to 200 our one percent and 0.1 percent lows were pretty low to be honest i'm not sure if it's similar to fortnite in the way that you've got to play a few games for all the textures and shaders to compile but overall it felt pretty playable uh, on this card so I would definitely give Overwatch 2 a pass on the GTX 680 but very similar to Fortnite I believe this is a more CPU intensive game and that is shown in the benchmark here. Now for our last title we tested High on Life which is probably what I would say to you if you said I run a GTX 680 in 2025 and have zero issues but all jokes aside it actually run pretty good i mean the fps was kind of all over the place in some areas we were getting as low as 50 and in some we were getting over 100 it was kind of up and down and this was on the lowest preset but overall it didn't look awful and it didn't feel bad like not as bad as witcher 3 for example uh, i believe this game was released in 2022 and it's a pretty weird game really you basically get abducted by aliens and whatnot so if if you are high you might actually enjoy this game but honestly it did run quite well and overall high on life is playable on the gtx 680 all right guys that's going to be just about it for this video today the gtx 680 in 2025 now there were many games that wouldn't run due to this not fully supporting directx 12 
And I do believe that the oldest Nvidia series that's fully supports DirectX 12 is the GTX 900 series. So that's definitely food for thought. Now there was a few other games like Forza Horizon 5 which I wanted to try and once again it just wouldn't run because of it needing DirectX 12 support. But overall I mean there were some games that did play but there wasn't necessarily modern. I mean many people would class Cyberpunk 2077 as modern but it's five years old now so I guess when it comes to modern games I guess some people would argue it's whatever's played the most even now even if it's seven eight years old like Fortnite. But honestly, I wouldn't recommend anyone to go buy a GTX 680 in 2025. If your friend gave it to you for free and said, here you go, because you don't have a graphics card, then sure. You know, use a GTX 680 until you can afford something slightly better. Maybe something like a GTX 1060 or 1070, which are quite cheap now. At least that way you'd have the full support regarding DirectX 12. Or if you really needed some ray tracing support or DLSS then something like RTX 2070 can be found for about £150 that's going to be a massive improvement over this card and would have six more gigabytes of VRAM as well but anyway guys I hope you all enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one